Welcome to today's Triple Z. The Triple Z Podcast is a daily program that you can use to help you fall asleep each night. Just turn down the volume, lay back, relax, and enjoy as you fall asleep. We saw that our podcast was topping the charts in Denmark. So we are going to read their Wikipedia entry. Let's learn about this interesting country in the dullest way possible. If you enjoy our program, please be sure to write us a review on your podcast platform and share us with a friend. You both might sleep just a little better at night. Our website is triple Z, that's three Z's dot media. You can also like and share our content on Facebook or our Instagram account ZZZ Media Podcast. Music for today's episode was provided by the Sleep Channel on Spotify. Denmark is a Nordic country in Northern Europe. It is the metropolitan part of and the most populous constituent of the Kingdom of Denmark, a constitutionally unitary state that includes the autonomous territories of the Faroe Islands and Greenland in the North Atlantic Ocean. Metropolitan Denmark is the southernmost of the Scandinavian countries, lying southwest and south, Bornholm and Erthelmien of Sweden, south of Norway, and north of Germany, with which it shares a short border, Denmark's only land border, apart from Hans Island. As of 2013, the Kingdom of Denmark, including the Faroe Islands and Greenland, had a total of 1,419 islands above 100 square meters, 1,100 square feet, 443 of these have been named and 78 are inhabited. Spanning a total area of 42,943 square kilometers, 16,580 square miles, metropolitan Denmark consists of the northern part of the Jutland Peninsula and an archipelago of 406 islands. Of these, the most populated island is Zealand, on which the capital and largest city, Copenhagen, is situated, followed by Funen, the North Atlantic Island, and amateur. Denmark has flat, arable land, sandy coasts, low elevations, and a temperate climate. It had a population of 5.935 million February 1st, 2023, of whom 800,000 live in Copenhagen, 2 million in the wider area. Denmark exercises hegemonic influence in the Danish realm, devolving powers to handle internal affairs. Home rule was established in the Faroe Islands in 1948 and in Greenland in 1979, the latter obtained further autonomy in 2009. The unified Kingdom of Denmark emerged in the 8th century AD as a proficient maritime power amid the struggle for control of the Baltic Sea. In 1397, it joined Norway and Sweden to form the Kalmar Union, which persisted until the latter's secession in 1523. The remaining kingdom of Denmark, Norway, endured a series of wars in the 17th century that resulted in further territorial sessions. A surge of nationalist movements in the 19th century were defeated in the First Schleswig War of 1848. The adoption of the Constitution of Denmark on June 5, 1849 ended the absolute monarchy and introduced the current parliamentary system. An industrialist exporter of agricultural produce in the second half of the 19th century, Denmark introduced social and labor market reforms in the early 20th century, which formed the basis for the present welfare state model and advanced mixed economy. Denmark remained neutral during World War I, Danish neutrality was violated in World War II by a swift German invasion in April 1940. During occupation, a resistance movement emerged in 1943, while Iceland declared independence in 1944, Denmark was liberated in May 1945. In 1973, Denmark, together with Greenland but not the Faroe Islands, 
became a member of what is now the European Union, but negotiated certain opt-outs, such as retaining its own currency, the Chrome. Denmark is a developed country with a high standard of living. Denmark is a founding member of NATO, the Nordic Council, the OECD, the OSCE, and the United Nations. It is also part of the Schengen area. Denmark maintains close political, cultural, and linguistic ties with its Scandinavian neighbors, with the Danish language being partially mutually intelligible with both Norwegian and Swedish. The etymology of the name Denmark, the relationship between Danes and Denmark, and the emergence of Denmark as a unified kingdom are topics of continuous scholarly debate. This is centered primarily on the morphing Dan and whether it refers to the Danny or a historical person Dan and the exact meaning of the mark ending. Most etymological dictionaries and handbooks derive Dan from a word meaning flat land related to German ten threshing floor English den cave. The element mark is believed to mean woodland or borderland, see marches, with probable references to the border forests in South Schleswig. The first recorded use of the word Denmark within Denmark itself is found on the two gelling stones, which are rune stones believed to have been erected by Gorm the Old, c. 955, and Harold Bluetooth, c. 965. The larger of the two stones is popularly cited as the baptismal certificate of Denmark, though both use the word Denmark in the accusative tan mark on the large stone and the genitive tan marker on the small stone, while the dative form tan marku is found on the contemporaneous skyvum stone. The inhabitants of Denmark are there called tanni or Danes in the accusative. The earliest archaeological finds in Denmark date back to the EEM interglacial period from 130,000 to 110,000 BC. Denmark has been inhabited since around 12,500 BC and agriculture has been evident since 3,900 BC. The Nordic Bronze Age, 1800 to 600 BC, in Denmark was marked by burial mounds, which left an abundance of findings including Luz and the Sun Chariot. During the Pre-Roman Iron Age, 500 BC, AD 1, native groups began migrating south, and the first tribal Danes came to the country between the Pre-Roman and the Germanic Iron Age in the Roman Iron Age, AD 1 to 400. The Roman provinces maintained trade routes and relations with native tribes in Denmark, and Roman coins have been found in Denmark. Evidence of strong Celtic cultural influence dates from this period in Denmark and much of Northwest Europe and is among other things reflected in the finding of the Kundestrup cauldron. The tribal Danes came from the East Danish islands, Zealand, and Scania and spoke an early form of North Germanic. Historians believe that before their arrival, most of Jutland and the nearest islands were settled by tribal Jutes. The Jutes migrated to Great Britain eventually, some as mercenaries of Brythonic King Vortigern, and were granted the southeastern territories of Kent, the Isle of Wight, and other areas where they settled. They were later absorbed or ethnically cleansed by the invading Angles and Saxons, who formed the Anglo-Saxons. The remaining Jewish population in Jutland assimilated in with the settling Danes. A short note about the Dani and Gedeka by the historian Jordans is believed to be an early mention of the Danes, one of the ethnic groups from whom modern Danes are descended. The Daneverk defense structures were built in phases from the 3rd century forward and the sheer size of the construction efforts in AD 737 are attributed to the emergence of a Danish king. A new runic alphabet was first used around the same time and Ribe, the oldest town of Denmark, was founded about AD 700. From the 8th to the 10th century, the wider Scandinavian region was the source of Vikings. They colonized, raided, and traded in all parts of Europe. 
The Danish Vikings were most active in the eastern and southern British Isles and Western Europe. They settled in parts of England, known as the Danelaw, under King Swain Forkbeard in 1013, and in France where Danes and Norwegians were allowed to settle in what would become Normandy in exchange of allegiance to Robert I of France with Rollo as first ruler. Some Anglo-Saxon pens of this period have been found in Denmark. Denmark was largely consolidated by the late 8th century and its rulers are consistently referred to in Frankish sources as kings, regis. Under the reign of Gudfred in 804 the Danish kingdom may have included all the lands of Jutland, Scania and the Danish islands, excluding Bornholm. The extant Danish monarchy traces its roots back to Gorm the Old, who established his reign in the early 10th century. As attested by the Gelling Stones, the Danes were Christianized around 965 by Harold Bluetooth, the son of Gorm. It is believed that Denmark became Christian for political reasons so as not to get invaded by the Holy Roman Empire. A rising Christian power in Europe, the Holy Roman Empire was an important trading partner for the Danes. As a deterrent against this threat, Harold built six fortresses around Denmark called Trelleborg and built a further Daneberg. In the early 11th century, Canute the Great won in United Denmark, England, and Norway for almost 30 years with a Scandinavian army. Throughout the High and Late Middle Ages, Denmark also included Skaneland, the areas of Scania, Halland, and Blekinge in present-day South Sweden, and Danish kings ruled Danish Estonia, as well as the duchies of Schleswig and Holstein. Most of the latter two now form the state of Schleswig-Holstein in northern Germany. In 1397, Denmark entered into a personal union with Norway and Sweden, united under Queen Margaret I. The three countries were to be treated as equals in the union. However, even from the start, Margaret may not have been so idealistic, treating Denmark as the clear senior partner of the union. Thus, much of the next 125 years of Scandinavian history revolves around this union, with Sweden breaking off and being reconquered repeatedly. The issue was for practical purposes resolved on June 17, 1523, as Swedish King Gustav Vasa conquered the city of Stockholm. The Protestant Reformation spread to Scandinavia in the 1530s, and following the Count's feud civil war, Denmark converted to Lutheranism in 1536. Later that year, Denmark entered into a union with Norway. After Sweden permanently broke away from the personal union, Denmark tried on several occasions to reassert control over its neighbor. King Christian IV attacked Sweden in the 1611-1613 Kalmar War but failed to accomplish his main objective of forcing it to return to the Union. The war led to no territorial changes, but Sweden was forced to pay a war indemnity of 1 million silver riksdollar to Denmark, an amount known as the Ellsborg Ransom. King Christian used this money to found several towns and fortresses, most notably Gluckstadt, founded as a rival to Hamburg and Christiania. Inspired by the Dutch East India Company, he founded a similar Danish company and planned to claim Ceylon as a colony, but the company only managed to acquire Tranquibar on India's Coromandel coast. Denmark's large colonial aspirations include a few key trading posts in Africa and India. While Denmark's trading posts in India were of little note, it played an important role in the highly lucrative Atlantic slave trade through its trading outposts in Fort Christiansborg in OSU, Ghana through which 1.5 million slaves were traded. While the Danish colonial empire was sustained by trade with other major powers and plantations, ultimately a lack of resources led to its stagnation. In the Thirty Years' War, Christian tried to become the leader of the Lutheran states in Germany but suffered a crushing defeat at the Battle of Lutter. 
The result was that the Catholic army under Albrecht von Wallenstein was able to invade, occupy, and pillage Jutland, forcing Denmark to withdraw from the war. Denmark managed to avoid territorial concessions, but King Gustavus Adolphus' intervention in Germany was seen as a sign that the military power of Sweden was on the rise while Denmark's influence in the region was declining. Swedish armies invaded Jutland in 1643 and claimed Scania in 1644. In the 1645 Treaty of Bronsebro, Denmark surrendered Halland, Gotland, the last parts of Danish Estonia, and several provinces in Norway. Seeing an opportunity to tear up the Treaty of Bronsebro, King Frederick III of Denmark in 1657 declared war on Sweden the latter being deeply involved in the Second Northern War, 1655-1660, and marched on Bremen Verden. This led to a massive Danish defeat as the armies of King Charles X Gustav of Sweden conquered Jutland and, following the Swedish march across the frozen Danish Straits, occupied Funen and much of Zealand before signing the Peace of Roskilde in February 1658, which gave Sweden control of Scania, Bleking, Bohuslän, Trondelag, and the island of Bornholm. Charles X Gustav quickly regretted not having ruined Denmark and in August 1658, he launched a second attack on Denmark, conquered most of the Danish islands, and began a two-year-long siege of Copenhagen. King Frederick III actively led the defense of the city, rallying its citizens to take up arms and repelled the Swedish attacks. The siege ended following the death of Charles X Gustav in 1660. In the ensuing peace settlement, Denmark managed to maintain its independence and regain control of Trondelag and Bornholm. Attaining great popularity following the war, Frederick III used this to disband the elective monarchy in favor of absolute monarchy, which lasted until 1848 in Denmark. Denmark tried but failed to regain control of Scania in the Scanian War, 1675-1679. After the Great Northern War, 1700-21, Denmark managed to regain control of the parts of Schleswig and Holstein ruled by the House of Holstein Gottorp in the 1720 Treaty of Fredericksburg and the 1773 Treaty of Sarsquicello, respectively. Denmark prospered greatly in the last decades of the 18th century due to its neutral status allowing it to trade with both sides in the many contemporary wars. In the Napoleonic Wars, Denmark traded with both France and the United Kingdom and joined the League of Armed Neutrality with Russia, Sweden, and Prussia. The British considered this a hostile act and attacked Copenhagen in 1801 and 1807, in one case carrying off the Danish fleet, in the other, burning large parts of the Danish capital. This led to the so-called Danish-British Gunboat War. British control of the waterways between Denmark and Norway proved disastrous to the Union's economy and in 1813 Denmark, Norway went bankrupt. The Union was dissolved by the Treaty of Kiel in 1814, the Danish monarchy irrevocably and forever renounced claims to the Kingdom of Norway in favor of the Swedish king. Denmark kept the possessions of Iceland, which retained the Danish monarchy until 1944, the Faroe Islands and Greenland, all of which had been governed by Norway for centuries. Apart from the Nordic colonies, Denmark continued to rule over Danish India from 1620 to 1869, the Danish Gold Coast, Ghana from 1658 to 1850, and the Danish West Indies from 1671 to 1917. A nascent Danish liberal and national movement gained momentum in the 1830s. After the European revolutions of 1848, Denmark peacefully became a constitutional monarchy on June 5, 1849. A new constitution established a two-chamber parliament. 
Denmark faced war against both Prussia and Austrian Empire in what became known as the Second Susswood War, lasting from February to October 1864. Denmark was defeated and obliged to cede Schleswig and Holstein to Prussia. This loss came as the latest in the long series of defeats and territorial losses that had begun in the 17th century. After these events, Denmark pursued a policy of neutrality in Europe. Industrialization came to Denmark in the second half of the 19th century. The nation's first railways were constructed in the 1850s and improved communications and overseas trade allowed industry to develop in spite of Denmark's lack of natural resources. Trade unions developed, starting in the 1870s. There was a considerable migration of people from the countryside to the cities, and Danish agriculture became centered on the export of dairy and meat products. Denmark maintained its neutral stance during World War I. After the defeat of Germany, the Versailles powers offered to return the region of Schleswig-Holstein to Denmark. Fearing German irredentism, Denmark refused to consider the return of the area without a plebiscite. The two Schleswig plebiscites took place on February 10th and March 14th, 1920, respectively. On July 10th, 1920, Northern Schleswig was recovered by Denmark, thereby adding some 163,600 inhabitants and 3,984 square kilometers, 1,538 square miles. The country's first social democratic government took office in 1924. In 1939, Denmark signed a 10-year non-aggression pact with Nazi Germany, but Germany invaded Denmark on April 9, 1940, and the Danish government quickly surrendered. World War II in Denmark was characterized by economic cooperation with Germany until 1943, when the Danish government refused further cooperation and its navy scuttled most of its ships and sent many of its officers to Sweden, which was neutral. The Danish resistance performed a rescue operation that managed to evacuate several thousand Jews and their families to safety in Sweden before the Germans could send them to death camps. Some Danes supported Nazism by joining the Danish Nazi party or volunteering to fight with Germany as part of the Frickorps Denmark. Iceland severed ties with Denmark and became an independent republic in 1944. Germany surrendered in May 1945. In 1948, the Faroe Islands gained home rule. In 1949, Denmark became a founding member of NATO. Denmark was a founding member of European Free Trade Association, EFTA. During the 1960s, the EFTA countries were often referred to as the Outer Seven, as opposed to the Inner Six of what was then the European Economic Community, EEC. In 1973, along with Britain and Ireland, Denmark joined the European Economic Community, now the European Union, after a public referendum. The Maastricht Treaty, which involved further European integration, was rejected by the Danish people in 1992. It was only accepted after a second referendum in 1993, which provided for four opt-outs from policies. The Danes rejected the euro as the national currency in a referendum in 2000. Greenland gained home rule in 1979 and was awarded self-determination in 2009. Neither the Faroe Islands nor Greenland are members of the European Union, the Faroese having declined membership of the EEC in 1973 and Greenland in 1986, in both cases because of fisheries policies. Constitutional change in 1953 led to a single chamber parliament elected by proportional representation, female accession to the Danish throne, and Greenland becoming an integral part of Denmark. The center-left Social Democrats led a string of coalition governments for most of the second half of the 20th century, introducing the Nordic welfare model. 
The Liberal Party and the Conservative People's Party have also led center-right governments. Located in Northern Europe, Denmark consists of the northern part of the Jutland Peninsula and an archipelago of 406 islands. Of these, the largest island is Zealand, on which the capital Copenhagen is situated, followed by the North Jutlandic Island, Funen, and Lolland. The island of Bornholm is located east of the rest of the country, in the Baltic Sea. Many of the larger islands are connected by bridges, a bridge tunnel across the Orsund connects Zealand with Sweden, the Great Belt Fixed Link connects Funen with Zealand, and the Little Belt Bridge connects Jutland with Funen. Ferries or small aircraft connect to the smaller islands. The four cities with populations over 100,000 are the capital Copenhagen on Zealand, Aarhus and Aalborg in Jutland, and Odense on Funen. The country occupies a total area of 42,943.9 square kilometers, 16,581 square miles. The area of inland water is 700 square kilometers, 270 square miles, variously stated as from 500 to 700 square kilometers, 193 to 270 square miles. Lake Ariso northwest of Copenhagen is the largest lake. The size of the land area cannot be stated exactly since the ocean constantly erodes and adds material to the coastline and because of human land reclamation projects to counter erosion. Post-glacial rebound raises the land by a bit less than 1 cm per year in the north and east, extending the coast. A circle enclosing the same area as Denmark would be 234 kilometers, 145 miles, in diameter with a circumference of 736 kilometers, 457 miles, land area only 232.33 km, 144.36 miles, and 730 kilometers, 454 miles, respectively. It shares a border of 68 kilometers, 42 miles, with Germany to the south and is otherwise surrounded by 8,750 kilometers, 5,437 miles of tidal shoreline, including small bays and inlets. No location in Denmark is farther from the coast than 52 kilometers, 32 miles. On the southwest coast of Jutland, the tide is between 1 and 2 m, 3.28 and 6.56 feet, and the tidaline moves outward and inward on a 10 kilometers, 6.2 miles stretch. Denmark's territorial waters total 105,000 square kilometers, 40,541 square miles. Denmark's northernmost point is Skagen Point, the north beach of the Ska, at 57 degrees 45 minutes 7 seconds northern latitude, the southernmost is Gietzer Point, the southern tip of Falster, at 54 degrees 33 minutes 35 seconds northern latitude, the westernmost point is Blavenshuk at 8 degrees 4 minutes 22 seconds eastern longitude, and the easternmost point is Osterskare at 15 degrees 11 minutes 55 seconds eastern longitude. This is in the small Atholmean archipelago 18 kilometers, 11 miles, northeast of Bornholm. The distance from east to west is 452 kilometers, 281 miles, from north to south 360 kilometers, 229 miles. The country is flat with little elevation, having an average height above sea level of 31 meters, 102 feet. The highest natural point is Malahoj at 170.86 meters, 560.56 feet. Although this is by far the lowest high point in the Nordic countries and also less than half of the highest point in southern Sweden, Denmark's general elevation in its interior is generally at a safe level from rising sea levels. 
A sizable portion of Denmark's terrain consists of rolling plains whilst the coastline is sandy with large dunes in northern Jutland. Although once extensively forested, today Denmark largely consists of arable land. It is drained by a dozen or so rivers, and the most significant include the Gudina, Odense, Skjern, Susa and Vida, a river that flows along its southern border with Germany. The Kingdom of Denmark includes two overseas territories, both well to the west of Denmark, Greenland, the world's largest island, and the Faroe Islands in the North Atlantic Ocean. These territories are self-governing under their own parliaments, the law Dingen and Inicisertet, and form, together with continental Denmark, part of the Danish realm. Denmark has a temperate climate, characterized by mild winters, with mean temperatures in January of 1.5 degrees Celsius 34.7 degrees Fahrenheit and cool summers, with a mean temperature in August of 17.2 degrees Celsius 63.0 degrees Fahrenheit. The most extreme temperatures recorded in Denmark since 1874 when recordings began was 36.4 degrees Celsius 97.5 degrees Fahrenheit in 1975 and minus 31.2 degrees Celsius minus 24.2 degrees Fahrenheit in 1982. Denmark has an average of 179 days per year with precipitation, on average receiving a total of 765 mm per year. Autumn is the wettest season and spring the driest. The position between a continent and an ocean means that the weather is often unstable. Because of Denmark's northern location, there are large seasonal variations in daylight, short days during the winter with sunrise coming around 8.45 a.m. and sunset 3.45 p.m. standard time, as well as long summer days with sunrise at 4.30 a.m. and sunset at 10 p.m. daylight saving time. Denmark belongs to the Boreal Kingdom and can be subdivided into two eco-regions, the Atlantic Mixed Forests and Baltic Mixed Forests. Almost all of Denmark's primeval temperate forests have been destroyed or fragmented, chiefly for agricultural purposes during the last millennia. The deforestation has created large swaths of heathland and devastating sand drifts. In spite of this, there are several larger second-growth woodlands in the country and, in total, 12.9% of the land is now forested. Norway spruce is the most widespread tree, 2017, an important tree in the Christmas tree production. Denmark holds a Forest Landscape Integrity Index mean score of 0.5-10, ranking at 171st globally out of 172 countries, behind only San Marino. Roe deer occupy the countryside in growing numbers, and large antler red deer can be found in the sparse woodlands of Jutland. Denmark is also home to smaller mammals, such as polecats, hares, and hedgehogs. Approximately 400 bird species inhabit Denmark and about 160 of those breed in the country. Large marine mammals include healthy populations of harbor porpoise, growing numbers of pinnipeds and occasional visits of large whales, including blue whales and orcas. Cod, herring and plaice are abundant culinary fish in Danish waters and form the basis for a large fishing industry. Denmark stopped issuing new licenses for oil and gas extraction in December 2020. Land and water pollution are two of Denmark's most significant environmental issues, although much of the country's household and industrial waste is now increasingly filtered and sometimes recycled. The country has historically taken a progressive stance on environmental preservation. In 1971, Denmark established a Ministry of Environment and was the first country in the world to implement an environmental law in 1973. 
To mitigate environmental degradation and global warming, the Danish government has signed the Climate Change Kyoto Protocol. However, the national ecological footprint is 8.26 global hectares per person, which is very high compared to a world average of 1.7 in 2010. Contributing factors to this value are exceptional high value for cropland but also a relatively high value for grazing land, which may be explained by the substantially high meat production in Denmark, 115.8 kilograms, 255 pounds, meat annually per capita, and the large economic role of the meat and dairy industries. In December 2014, the Climate Change Performance Index for 2015 placed Denmark at the top of the table, explaining that although emissions are still quite high, the country was able to implement effective climate protection policies. In 2020, Denmark was placed first in the index again. In 2021, Denmark, with Costa Rica, launched the Beyond Oil and Gas Alliance for stopping use fossil fuels. Denmark's territories, Greenland and the Faroe Islands, catch approximately 650 whales per year. Greenland's quotas for the catch of whales are determined according to the advice of the International Whaling Commission, IWC, having quota decision-making powers. Politics in Denmark operate under a framework laid out in the Constitution of Denmark. First written in 1849, it establishes a sovereign state in the form of a constitutional monarchy with a representative unicameral parliamentary system. The monarch officially retains executive power and presides over the Council of State, Privy Council. In practice, the duties of the monarch are strictly representative and ceremonial, such as the formal appointment and dismissal of the prime minister and other government ministers. The monarch is not answerable for his or her actions, and their person is sacrosanct. Hereditary monarch Queen Margrethe II has been head of state since January 14, 1972. The Danish parliament is unicameral and called the Folketing, Danish, Folketing it. It is the legislature of the Kingdom of Denmark, passing acts that apply in Denmark and, variably, Greenland and the Faroe Islands. The Folketing is also responsible for adopting the state's budgets, approving the state's accounts, appointing and exercising control of the government, and taking part in international cooperation. Bills may be initiated by the government or by members of parliament. All bills passed must be presented before the Council of State to receive royal assent within 30 days in order to become law. Denmark is a representative democracy with universal suffrage. Membership of the Folketing is based on proportional representation of political parties with a 2% electoral threshold. Denmark elects 175 members to the Folketing, with Greenland and the Faroe Islands electing an additional two members each, 179 members in total. Parliamentary elections are held at least every four years, but it is within the powers of the Prime Minister to ask the monarch to call for an election before the term has elapsed. On a vote of no confidence, the Folketing may force a single minister or an entire government to resign. The government of Denmark operates as a cabinet government, where executive authority is exercised, formally, on behalf of the monarch, by the Prime Minister and other cabinet ministers who head ministries. As the executive branch, the cabinet is responsible for proposing bills and a budget, executing the laws, and guiding the foreign and internal policies of Denmark. The position of Prime Minister belongs to the person most likely to command the confidence of a majority in the Folketing. This is often the current leader of the largest political party or, more effectively, through a coalition of parties. 
A single party generally does not have sufficient political power in terms of the number of seats to form a cabinet on its own. Denmark has often been ruled by coalition governments, themselves usually minority governments dependent on non-government parties. Following a general election defeat in June 2015, Hella Thorningschmidt, leader of the Social Democrats, Social Democraturn, resigned as Prime Minister. She was succeeded by Lars Luger Rasmussen, the leader of the Liberal Party, Finster. Rasmussen became the leader of a cabinet that, unusually, consisted entirely of ministers from his own party. In November 2016, Liberal Alliance and the Conservatives joined the government. Rasmussen held the office from 2009 to 2011 and again from 2015 to 2019 with backing from the Danish People's Party, DF. Following the 2019 general election, the Social Democrats, led by leader Meta Frederiksen, formed a single-party government with support from the left-wing coalition. Frederiksen became Prime Minister on June 27, 2019. In the November 2022 snap general election, Prime Minister Frederiksen's Social Democrats remained the majority party. In December 2022, Frederiksen formed a new coalition government. Denmark has a civil law system with some references to Germanic law. Denmark resembles Norway and Sweden in never having developed a case law like that of England and the United States nor comprehensive codes like those of France and Germany. Much of its law is customary. The judicial system of Denmark is divided between courts with regular civil and criminal jurisdiction and administrative courts with jurisdiction over litigation between individuals and the public administration. Articles 62 and 64 of the Constitution ensure judicial independence from government and parliament by providing that judges shall only be guided by the law, including acts, statutes, and practice. The Kingdom of Denmark does not have a single unified judicial system. Denmark has one system, Greenland another, and the Faroe Islands a third. However, decisions by the highest courts in Greenland and the Faroe Islands may be appealed to the Danish High Courts. The Danish Supreme Court is the highest civil and criminal court responsible for the administration of justice in the Kingdom. The Kingdom of Denmark is a unitary state that comprises, in addition to metropolitan Denmark, two autonomous territories in the North Atlantic Ocean, the Faroe Islands and Greenland. They have been integrated parts of the Danish realm since the 18th century, however, due to their separate historical and cultural identities, these parts of the realm have extensive political powers and have assumed legislative and administrative responsibility in a substantial number of fields. Home rule was granted to the Faroe Islands in 1948 and to Greenland in 1979, each having previously had the status of counties. The Faroe Islands and Greenland have their own home governments and parliaments and are effectively self-governing in regards to domestic affairs apart from the judicial system and monetary policy. High Commissioners, Riks and Budsman, act as representatives of the Danish government in the Faroese Lofting and in the Greenlandic Parliament, but they cannot vote. The Faroese home government is defined to be an equal partner with the Danish national government, while the Greenlandic people are defined as a separate people with the right to self-determination. Denmark, with a total area of 43,094 square kilometers, 16,639 square miles, is divided into five administrative regions, Danish, Regioner, the regions are further subdivided into 98 municipalities, Kaminer. The easternmost land in Denmark, the Ertholmene Archipelago, with an area of 39 hectares, 0.16 square miles, is neither part of a municipality nor a region but belongs to the Ministry of Defense. The provinces of Denmark are statistical divisions of Denmark, 
position between the administrative regions and municipalities. They are not administrative divisions, nor subject for any kind of political elections, but are mainly for statistical use. The regions were created on January 1st, 2007 to replace the 16 former counties. At the same time, smaller municipalities were merged into larger units, reducing the number from 270. Most municipalities have a population of at least 20,000 to give them financial and professional sustainability, although a few exceptions were made to this rule. The administrative divisions are led by directly elected councils, elected proportionally every four years. The most recent Danish local elections were held on November 16, 2021. Other regional structures use the municipal boundaries as a layout, including the police districts, the court districts, and the electoral wards. The governing bodies of the regions are the regional councils, each with 41 councillors elected for four-year terms. The councils are headed by regional district chairman, regions transfermand, who are elected by the council. The areas of responsibility for the regional councils are the National Health Service, Social Services, and Regional Development. Unlike the counties they are replaced, the regions are not allowed to levy taxes and the health service is partly financed by a national health care contribution until 2018, Sunheadsbedrag, partly by funds from both government and municipalities. From January 1st, 2019 this contribution will be abolished as it is being replaced by higher income tax instead. The area and populations of the regions vary widely. For example, the capital region has a population three times larger than that of North Denmark region. Under the county system, certain densely populated municipalities, such as Copenhagen Municipality and Frederiksberg, have been given a status equivalent to that of counties, making them first-level administrative divisions. These sui generis municipalities were incorporated into the new regions under the 2007 reforms. Denmark wields considerable influence in Northern Europe and is a middle power in international affairs. In recent years, Greenland and the Faroe Islands have been guaranteed a say in foreign policy issues such as fishing, whaling, and geopolitical concerns. The foreign policy of Denmark is substantially influenced by its membership of the European Union EU. Denmark, including Greenland, joined the European Economic Community EEC, the EU's predecessor, in 1973. Denmark held the presidency of the Council of the European Union on seven occasions, most recently from January to June 2012. Following World War II, Denmark ended its 200-year-long policy of neutrality. It has been a founding member of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, since 1949, and membership remains highly popular. As a member of Development Assistance Committee, DAC, Denmark has for a long time been among the countries of the world contributing the largest percentage of gross national income to development aid. In 2015, Denmark contributed 0.85% of its gross national income GNI, to foreign aid and was one of only six countries meeting the long-standing UN target of 0.7% of GNI. The country participates in both bilateral and multilateral aid, with the aid usually administered by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The organizational name of Danish International Development Agency, Danada, is often used, in particular when operating bilateral aid. Denmark's armed forces are known as the Danish Defense, Danish Forsferet. The Minister of Defense is Commander-in-Chief of the Danish Defense and serves as Chief Diplomatic Official abroad. During peacetime, the Ministry of Defense employs around 33,000 in total. The main military branches employ almost 27,000, 
15,460 in the Royal Danish Army, 5,300 in the Royal Danish Navy and 6,050 in the Royal Danish Air Force, all including conscripts. The Danish Emergency Management Agency employs 2,000, including conscripts, and about 4,000 are in non-branch specific services like the Danish Defense Command and the Danish Defense Intelligence Service. Furthermore, around 44,500 serve as volunteers in the Danish Home Guard. Denmark is a longtime supporter of international peacekeeping, but since the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia in 1999 and the war in Afghanistan in 2001, Denmark has also found a new role as a warring nation, participating actively in several wars and invasions. This relatively new situation has stirred some internal critique, but the Danish population has generally been very supportive, in particular of the war in Afghanistan. The Danish defense has around 1,400 staff in international missions, not including standing contributions to NATO SNMCMG-1. Danish forces were heavily engaged in the former Yugoslavia in the UN Protection Force, UNPR-4, with EFAIR and NAUS-4. Between 2003 and 2007, there were approximately 450 Danish soldiers in Iraq. Denmark also strongly supported American operations in Afghanistan and has contributed both monetarily and materially to the ISAF. These initiatives are often described by the authorities as part of a new active foreign policy of Denmark.